Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today, very special guest, the guitar technician extraordinaire, Charlie Chandler, has joined us for this little series. And we're going to start with doing a guitar condition report. So you've just bought one. How are you going to find out if it's all right or not? Well, you can, you maybe want to rewind one little bit from that because you, you might not want to buy the guitar if you don't like the way it sounds and, and uh, kind of I guess the fundamental test you could do if you're able to go in and, and play the guitar before you buy it just pick it up and strum it if it sounds like a bag of nails and you think oh that sounds dreadful uh -huh. put, it, put it down yeah, yeah okay put it down get the next one this, this actually it's a very inexpensive guitar but you know it's definitely got some corners that have been cut but the basic concept of the sound is good it's mm. you know it's going to be all how, right i think how do beginners tell if it sounds like a bag of nails so if you're a beginner guitar player i'm guessing that it'd be hard to tell whether it actually sounds good or not yeah just playing devil's advocate but you know to, yeah it's... yeah i get that but i think you know music being you know an art form even mm -hmm. at a very base level when you're a beginner i think if you strum it even if you don't play a chord, if you strum it, you don't like the way it sounds. Then, if you're able, if you're in a you know a music shop, go mm. in and, and try various ones until you like the sound of yeah. one. Yeah, and that that can be that can be a, a start point. I think you know music and creating. It's all about identifying what you like. It's not necessarily what you're told to like. Mm -hmm. You let, let your ears be the judge and yeah. try and try and always go with that. Is a, I think that's, that's a good. That's some of stellar watchword. advice. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, so you've given it a strum in the shop and you've yep. thought it was okay and you've yeah, brought it home. You brought it home. And and you you think and what what do I need to check and what things because the <coughs> idea I guess of this little series is. We're going to figure out some things we can do to try and improve a, a, okay. a budget guitar. Okay. Um, the a budget guitar is basically, you know, a pile of parts. In this case, screwed together. The neck is, you know, screwed to the mm. body via four screws and a neck plate, body, neck, and bridge tuners. And where they cut the corners if you like is that they don't really do any, any of the finessing once they've screwed it together mm -hmm. and thereby again it's quite important as i say to go and play various guitars because because they are literally bolted and screwed together some of them will be better than others mm -hmm. the key thing really um when you're a beginner as you'll know mm -hmm. better than anyone being a you know esteemed teacher if you can't hold down the chords and can't press the strings down, then it's going to hurt your fingers and you're going to think, oh, I can do, no, yeah, yeah, let me yeah. go do something else. <laughs> I don't yeah. need to be doing this. Yeah. So what you need to do is make it so that it feels comfortable to play. You, you've established you like the sound of it, we've now got to make it feel comfortable. Yeah. And the key to making it comfortable in a beginner, we're going to say that initially you're going to be concentrating on most of your activities in the first five mm -hmm. to seven frets. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So <clears throat> the key thing that's going to dictate whether it's easy or difficult to play is the nut height, but kind of qualified by any relief or straightness in the neck, and then the action of the the bridge saddles, the height yeah, yeah. of the bridge saddles. Thank you, David. The the best way of kind of the the order of process really is there's no point trying to adjust the nut if the neck relief is wrong if the neck right. is like a banana yeah. and you bring the nut right down low you're not necessarily going to optimize the nut uh -huh. in fact you could be going to a whole right. bunch of problems if you okay. do that so what we need to do first off is evaluate the neck relief and the easy way to do that um if you if i was doing it you know, as a, a job in the, in the shop, the way we would do it, we kind of uh, using whoops, using your your fretting hand will um, fret the the low E string at the first fret, so the F note, and then using your picking hand, 
probably where the neck joins the body, say you're on 15, 17, put your thumb on and then swing this finger over. It's a bit of a kind of, I don't know, a bit of a strange aspect you have to adopt. So Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of I'm gonna do a quick little film here so they can see what you're doing from the Okay. There's another the there's another better way of doing it which might be a using, okay. a, using All right, a capo. Okay. Yeah. So the way that do you want to film that? Yeah, anyway? no, well, yeah, okay, let's, okay. Do, let's do a quick okay. So we're kind of doing that, and what we're looking for, we're at 17, and around, you know, 7th, 8th fret, we're looking for a tiny bit of relief. So using, what you're doing is effectively using the string at tension yeah. as a straight edge against the frets yeah, 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 of course. and neck. And so what you're looking for is clearance. And you want it to be touching you, the frets, or you don't no, want no, it to you, be? No, unless, you, unless you're a super legato guy, right, okay. you don't. Right. You, you want some clearance. If you're a blues guy who wants to dig in, you probably want more clearance than if, if you're... And we're, but we're just talking like millimetres, right? Really talking, small Well, amounts. The, the, way, the easiest way to tell, people will tell you, is feeler gauges. But if you, when you change strings, if you just... The high E string is normally a 9, 10 gauge. Yeah. 10, 10 thou is a good relief to have. So what you can do is just um, when you change strings next, just save a bit of the old high E string uh -huh. or a bit of the new one, clip it off and just um, tape it to a card right. and then you can use it. You can use, use that as a feeler. Use that as a feeler gauge. Mm -hmm. Great. And that, that will give you an idea. This is actually you know, not bad. So I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. it. And you can hear that as I'm pushing it down, yeah, yeah. the string's clanking against the frets. Yeah. Um, that's good. You want it to be doing that. And then you want to check the treble side as well, because it will tell you where that. And in fact, that's not quite so good. That's got, there's more, there's more gap on the treble side than there is on the bass side. So what that says is the neck is straighter on the bass side than it is on the treble side. Aha, so it's Which a little is, bit twisted. So it's, yeah, I mean, say so people panic when you say twisted. I mean, lots of guitars are, lots of guitars are like that and you can get them to play perfectly fine. So in, it's not a in the great the scheme of things, with this guitar, you know, as a guitar where primarily we're going to be in the first few frets, we're not going to worry about that, I don't yes. think. Yes, cool. So, um, you know, were the relief the same on the bass side as it is on the treble side, I would do the truss rod up, uh -huh. and just so we know what that involves. Yeah. In fact, we we can we can do it if you like. We yeah. do the truss rod, up and okay. then you'll see. Yeah.